jab from Richard there Tom took it well nice movement as well and as I said I've seen both these young men fight for the EBA before and they know their way around a ring different defensive styles they've both got here. I've noticed straight away the blue corner he's uh, Richard's got he drops that right hand in front of his chin as he throws the jab he switch it from left to right left to right his right hand is, is his main defense whereas the other guy keeps his hands nice and tucked up by his head whereas he blocks some shots there like that and it just brings that little shoulder blade up as well, Tom Barrett, as, as Richard come forward. So both men having a good look in this opening round. Nice pace to it. A lot of work, but not over-anxious either man. And again, it's nice to see when people work their way into the round. As we were saying earlier, Richie, you know, almost have a good look at your opponent in that opener. Yeah, I feel like they're both being smart here, taking their time, having their, both having their moments. There's not much between them now. You can see they've both got similar styles with their attacks, but different defensive styles. Richard's dropped that right hand a few times, like maybe stole it from Black Ice earlier. It's the same shot he was throwing. He's landed it a couple of times, but maybe they're warming. They both feel like they've got the power to hurt each other as well, so it could be an interesting fight. Yes, yeah, so and as you said rightly, um, same team as Black Ice, the same stylistic there with that right hand, and it, it can look lazy, but as we saw with Black Ice, it was so fast and, and perfect for him. That's the thing. If you have a tense muscle, if you're tensed up, you kind of create a resistance when you're throwing a shot. So the other tense muscle will create a resistance against your shot. If you relax and you throw that right hand or even a left hand, that's a deadly punch if you can throw it while you're relaxed. And these, these legends boys seem to be masters of it. Yes, very relaxed there. And as you said rightly, I like the way that the, the movement just and the, the rolling of the shoulders again. We, we talk about defensive measures. One of the things I like from Richard as well is, is that nice little roll to the shoulder just as he, sh he throws the shot moves. And the moment you're throwing the shot and rolling that shoulder, you're moving your head out of the way of the retaliation. But to be fair to both men, very close round. They both had their success in that round. For me, the most telling shot, the red corner landed on a nice straight right, right at the end of that round, just before the bell. He landed the right hand. For me, if I wouldn't, I can't split them, but if I had to, that right hand might nick it for me. Just because there's a few seconds to go, can't decide, one clean shot, oh, best shot around. 
And again, as you rightly said, it's worth thinking as well. As judges are watching and they may be on the fence, as the road, round goes on, it's only natural that the work at the end of the round can be the eye-catching moment. Some fighters fight that style. They'll, they'll, they'll coast for two minutes, coast for two minutes, coast for another 30 seconds. 30 seconds ago, they'll, they'll put a lot of work in. Some, I think most judges are wise to that, but some judges will think, well, I couldn't split him. He did work at the end. Or they forget what happened at the start of the round. And the last thing they remember was just what happened. So that could be key in this opening round of a very cagey bout indeed between two men very good defensively. And stylistically, this, this is one of the most intriguing we've had because, again, they're both quite hard to hit. They're both throwing well technically and very evenly matched, whereas we've seen contrasting styles before. These two men are very similar. Yeah, very similar. I think their attacks are very similar. Only thing that they differ from is their defensive style. I like Tom's double jab, he doubles up that jab very well. The only risk with that double jab, a double jab is a very effective shot, is that Richard throws that right hand very successfully over the top. So he's looking to dip under and he'll throw a shot out of that. Yeah, I think you're right. For me, when you're doing that double jab, the key is the confidence and the speed of the second jab as you're coming forward. If you're still pushing forward with it, so your opponent's having to back off rather than think of throwing that right. Very important, because if you throw a if you throw a lazy jab, it can be a range finder, just to get them thinking. But if you throw a double like it, that's an opportunity for, for your opponent. You have to be careful with that. Another nice clean right hand there from Richard. He's landed two of them in this round. And again, he moves that head just nicely out of the way. And, and one thing you said before that I want to pick up on is the relaxed nature of the Legends fighters, that they, that they are loose and relaxed. And for me as well, that aids your stamina. Do you know what I think that comes with sparring? You can tell a lot about how a boy boxes by the amount of sparring. If they haven't done a lot of sparring, they can be tense and unfit. They're not, they're not, they just not feel at home in the ring. Like you said earlier, you said earlier, if you feel at home in the ring, you'll be more relaxed and it'll show when you're fighting. If you've done a lot of sparring, it'll be easy. That said, I want to pick up on something else you said earlier. You like the way that Tom Barrett threw those shots. That midsection there, three or four really good straight punches from Tommy. He, he throws them really sweetly. He's fantastic with them straights. There he goes with the jab. Up and down as well, he's mixing it up, head to body. But again, as we mentioned at the beginning of this one, where we thought it would be a very even and very technical bout, their facial expressions haven't changed. Um, they've maybe upped the pace, but th they've never looked as if they're sort of like anxious. They've just kept the same demeanor. They've, they've kept a good work rate. These are two very solid men in there. Again, that's experience, I think, right? If you're if you're inexperienced, you'll make facial expressions, give stories away to your opponent. When you're experienced, you know the right thing to do is, it doesn't matter what you're feeling, he doesn't need to know. And I think, to be fair, it was the, the, the straight punching of Tom Barrett. Maybe pulled this one, you know, if I was looking for maybe a clean winner of this round, Tom impressed me in the second here. But having said that, that was a beautiful straight left from Richard. This is a very close fight this world. This is one of the closest ones so far. Two rounds, very close rounds. You could think I'd say, I'm going to go one apiece so far, just for argument's sake. Yeah, this is, this is, we, we thought it would be a good technical bout. It is two very good men in there. And we've been really impressed with Lee's matchmaking tonight here for the EBA on, on an incredible card of boxing. We've got more title fights to come. But matchmaking is the key to a great bout, Richard. It's a key to a great show together, you know. I think people don't want to pay to see one, one fight now. I think having a big undercard or a big... Sometimes if, uh, if there's ten impressive fights and not one big one, it can do better than seven average fights and one big one. So having good matching like this will attract people, and that's why I think Lee, Lee does, does well with what he does here. So both these men will have been told by the corners there's still everything to box for. We've got it on a knife edge. Our comments are just that, it's a commentary, we're not the judges, but we feel this one is probably the toughest tonight for the judges to score. So, Richie, just playing devil's advocate, let's make a case for either man. If it was Tom Barrett the judges were going for, who's just thrown those straights now, why would they be going for Tom? Tom's nice and tidy with his boxing, he keeps nice, composed, he throws, all he throws is straight shots, and straight shots are the key to basic boxing. Boom, 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 move, boom, 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 move. Very, very good at it, keeping the long jab, the double jab and the straight right. For me, that's what would give it for the red. And for, and for the blue, for Richard Pike, if the judges were looking to air in his favour, what is it about that he does well? He's moving his head well. He does make he does make the red corner miss well. Richard does make him miss well. And when Richard throws shots, he is landing very clean. So he's got some nice variety of shots as well. He's less with the straights and more with the variety. He's throwing hooks, uppercuts. There he goes with an uppercut and a hook. Very effective when they're landing as well. 
What I like, though, is neither man has allowed his opponent to get up ahead of steam. They've seen the danger, they've responded. That's what's made this bout so good for us, is each man has responded. Again, we saw the straight punches there of Tom Barrett. Just after Richard Pike had a good 10, 15 seconds in, in the ascendancy there, this one, for me, is still perfectly balanced here in the third. This is another fantastic round. For me, I felt that, that Tom has stole a little bit of the straight shots, but... Like you say, as I was thinking that at the start of the round, Richard has put some strong pressure on here, catching him clean shots. And mate, I, I really enjoyed that, that uppercut and hook he landed earlier as well. I like, I like fighters that do the variety like that. Yeah, this could be the key between the two. And again, another factor we've got to take in is we've got judges at three different areas of the ring. A bat can look different from your position here. You know, I could even see this one maybe going split. Massively. And the same as when you watch them on TV. They look so different on TV from when you're watching them live. So this one has ended, uh, and Richie and I really enjoyed it for various reasons. And these, these guys never stopped. And as we can see here, the straight punching of Tom against the movement of Richard and for me do you know what I, I, I had Red winning that round at the start and then Richard came out with that hook and that uppercut and hook and it stole and it stole the round for me and then he had some success again and then Richard I'm going to go Richard because I can't split him and I really enjoyed his variety his variety stole it for me there I do think he took more shots but I think his variety for me well looking at the two men are we going for a fourth here I thought it was three twos but neither man has come off the stool the corners are still talking Richie now when it was announced it was announced as a three rounder but I'm happy to say they're going for a fourth here which could be all the difference we were told at the beginning of the bout was a three rounder and Billy our ring announcer one of the best in the business has just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders to say I was told it was three but hey let's look at the positives we've got another round from these two oh, men just about to say it's good news for us it's an entertaining part and maybe they need this one this winner takes all one more round that's a good call, and I said Billy looked over and, and smiled. And lands a nice, fight, lush, nice shot there. And gets on his bike afterwards as well. And again, oh, oh. nice uppercut from Tom on the inside, and for the he first time, that. Richard did, I was going to say, Richie, he acknowledged that for the first time there. Oh, and he acknowledged the fact that one that was, was low. low. That was low. He's counting him, but that was low. Now, that's unfortunate. I mean, to be fair to Ed, who I know very well. He, he saw the blow come in, but from our commentary position here, that, that landed v low very there. Low, very low, but the ref can't see it all. It's just one of them things. That's going to, for me, that might change the result of the fight. You're right, this could make... Oh, and that was that was nothing wrong with that one. That was that left again, that bringing the uppercut through. And it's amazing, Richie, how about... You mentioned the fourth could be pivotal in terms of strength, the stamina. Yes, he took the one low. as The towel's gone in. Now, I think the corner a bit upset about the early low one, which, as I said, Ed's a really good ref, but he missed that. There was nothing with the second shot. The, the second left was a killer. That's crazy, the way three rounds couldn't decide. You could not, you could not split him for, for three rounds, one round more, and it made all the difference. Yeah, good cornering there in, in the sense that, as I said, um, Richie and I here in the commentary, it was a good angle for us to see the low blow. It wasn't a good angle for our ref. But after that, Tom really capitalised on that second left, the uppercut coming through. Did it, and it, it was a pleasure to watch that bout. But as Richie said, three bats, and it looks like it is a title fight here. This is why it went to the fourth. We weren't told before it was a, a title fight. Something bothered Richard though. I think he's picked up an injury of some sort. He, maybe his jaw gone, or but do you know what? To say that that was a knockout at the end was amazing because it was so close to the fight. They wasn't really affecting each other. Then all of a sudden, he got a bit unfortunate with the low blow, which the ref took as a body shot. Either way, it didn't make a difference because the next shot did the job. Oh, yes. And so it's, we're going to have a Southern Area champion, and it is going to be Tom Barrett in a very entertaining Ladies bout indeed. and gentlemen, in one minute and three seconds of the Your winner in the red corner and the Southern Area EPA champion Tom Barrett.
turn to it tonight, Mr. Richard Wright. But once again, your winner, and new EPA Southern Area Champion, Tom Verdus Barrett.